Hello, I'm Liam Jenkins and welcome to highlights of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship. Band 4 of the championship takes place in Turkey at Istanbul Park. Designed by Herman Tika, the circuit features some very distinctive corners, such as the sharp downhill opening corner and the famous Turn 8, a fast sweeping corner with four apexes. Qualifying saw position driver Jakob Mikkelen take his first pole position since 2009. Then it was the two twister drivers of Atze Kirchhoff and Frederick Nielsen, just ahead of Mikko Pumalainen in 4th and Bruno Marquez in 5th. Lucas Euler achieved a great result to put his Ghost Speed car into 6th place, ahead of David Greco and Dennis Hurl. Ala Fort made it into 9th place and Bono Quis would start in 10th after a mistake on his qualifying lap. The GT Omega Racing Team qualified in 11th and 13th and faster than speed would start in 15th and 17th. A notable absence from the top 10 was the Arrow F1 team, with John Eric Saxon only managing 14th. To the race start, and with a clean launch off the line, Mikkonen immediately moved over to defend his position. Euler made contact with Marquez and span off the circuit, while the rest of the field cleanly made it through the opening corner. A mistake from Tali caused some contact in the midfield, dropping the Estonian to the back of the pack. Patrick De Witt made another impressive start, getting up to 11th place. Having passed four already, Quisa made a move on Hurl to move up into 7th position. And in the midfield, Rene Rim was given a drive through penalty for jumping the start. Bruno Marquez then lost two positions in one lap, losing out to his old teammate David Greco and then to Quis, who made an outside pass into Turn 1. In 12th place, Blair Disley was desperately searching for a way around De Witt, but a mistake saw the too fast for you car lose out to both of the Aero F1 drivers. At the back of the pack, Ernesto De Angelis was wedged in a go speed sandwich, and the recovering Nula made an aggressive pass for 17th place, damaging De Angelis' car in the process. In the lead, Mikkonen could not create a gap back to Kirchhoff, and eventually the twister driver got close enough to pass into the final hairpin. However, Mikkonen came right back at Kirchhoff, pulling off an impressive overtake to retake the lead. Frederick Nielsen then came into the attack, getting alongside Kirchhoff down the back straight, but contact was made between the two twister drivers, resulting in some damage to Kirchhoff's car. Quiz continued his charge, passing Pumalainen for fourth, who put up very little of a fight. Meanwhile, there was plenty of action in the midfield. Jack Heathy managed to pass Alaphor for tenth place, having been stuck behind the ATR car for several laps. After a bad start, Rasmus Tali was slowly but surely carving his way up through the field, now up into 11th place. In the battle for 15th, Reno Room's race ended prematurely when a collision between himself and Ben Phillips resulted in him stalling his engine. Back at the front, a mistake from David Greco gave his 6th position back to Marquez, and a few laps later, Atse Kirchhoff driving a slightly damaged car pushed his twister machine too hard through turn 8, spinning the car and being lucky to keep his engine going. He rejoined the track in 7th place, losing any hope of a podium finish. However, his teammate Frederick Nilsson pounced on a mistake by race leader Jakob Mikkonen, passing him down the back straight for the lead. But once again, Mikkonen came at the twister car into Turn 1, and the two drivers made contact, with Nilsson losing out. Quiz was now immediately behind Nilsson, and the Dutch champion made an impressive overtake into Turn 4, giving position the top two positions. Not surprisingly, it didn't take long for Quiz to get within striking range, and although he couldn't make his passing attempt to stick the first time, he slipped by Mikkonen at the end of the back straight to take over the lead. In 10th place, Jack Heathley, Rasmus Tarly and John Eric Saxon were frantically fighting over the final points paying position. Tarly and Keithley swapped positions several times with neither driver able to break free. Although Tarly appeared to be slightly quicker, Keithley continuously came back at the Mac Corp racing driver to maintain his position. In 4th place, Miko Pumalainen was slowly being reeled in by Bruno Marquez. Marquez was the first of the two to pit, and with cold tyres, Pumalainen was caught out on his cut lap and passed through the final three turns. Meanwhile, Greco's race ended on lap 34 with his Too Fast For You card suffering an electrical fault, and teammate Blair's Disley's two-stop strategy clearly not worked, with the Australian only in 7th position and another stop still to make. The second stint saw Quis storm away with the lead, Second place, Jakob Mikkonen was being kept honest by Nilsson in third. And not far behind, Marquez and Pumalainen followed in fourth and fifth. That say Kirchhoff effectively leapfrogged Dennis Hull for sixth position. Patrick De Witt was eventually brought in and passed by Rasmus Tarly, and then immediately by John Eric Saxon. De Witt continued to fight for ninth position with Saxon, but eventually the Aero F1 car prevailed, dropping De Witt into tenth. 
further behind, Jim Parisis had benefited from Ben Phillips and Alaforte's two stop strategies, but the Ghost Speed driver crashed out in the final corner with just two laps to go. After his second stop, Blair Disley caught and passed Jack Keithley for 11th, and on the second lap, Disley made an attack on De Vitt at the end of the back straight. The two cars made hard contact and both drivers did well to maintain control, with Disley coming out on top. But a determined De Vitt managed to slip back past Disley through turn 3 and retake the position. Making it 4 from 4, an unstoppable Bono Quiz came from 10th on the grid to take his 13th career victory. Jakob Mikkonen held off Frederick Nelson to finish in 2nd place, making it another precision 1-2. Bruno Marquez crossed the line in 4th ahead of Miko P. Malinen and Atze Kirchhoff. Further behind, Dennis Hurl finished in 7th, completing a decent points haul for the Netrex Grand Prix team. And Rasmus Tali's storm from the back of the grid placed him in an impressive 8th place. Saxon finished in 9th place after a difficult race, and a delighted Patrick De Witt picked up his first point of the season for the Faster Than Speed team. So after 4 rounds, Bono Quiz is already at the 100 point mark, taking the maximum possible score so far. Mikkonen has moved ahead of Greco into second, who now has Pumalan and just five points behind him. Nilsson has moved up into fifth place, and Vitaly remains in sixth position, just one point ahead of Saxon. In the Constructors' Championship, Precision's dominance has continued with the German outfit, nearly 100 points ahead of second place. Matt Corp remain in second place, but Twister Racing have moved up into third after scoring a good result. Too Fast Speed failed to score at Turkey, and Aero F1 only picked up two points. With both Netrex cars finishing inside the top 10 today, the team has jumped up to 6th position. The next round will be the rerunning of the Malaysian Grand Prix, and you can watch this race live as it happens. Simply go to www.psrtv.com on the 22nd of May at 5.30pm GMT. We hope you enjoyed today's highlights. I'm Liam Jenkins, and we'll see you next week for round 5 of the 2011 Formula Sim Racing World Championship.